I want to give you a little advice about how to approach the scientific readings that were part of the review sheet and to help you anticipate what kind of questions we might ask from this material. The questions on the exam will ask you to interpret the chemistry that's in these articles in light of the concepts that we've been discussing in Chem 332. In preparing for the exam, familiarize yourself with terms that you're not certain about. Pay attention to details, like the stereochemistry. Study the mechanistic schemes, like the one that's shown here in Scheme 2. If you encounter a structure that you're not certain about, ask yourself, what exactly does that mean? Maybe you could ask yourself, how would I interpret that, or how would I input that into ACE Organic? Make sure you understand the functional groups that are described, such as phenols, and pay attention to details like compound 4 is described to be in equilibrium with compound 12 rather than a double-headed arrow like we would expect to see if we're talking about a resonance structure. Reading the scientific literature can be a little daunting, and since it's different than other kinds of reading that you're more familiar with, and because you've probably not spent a lot of time reading scientific papers, I thought I would give you a couple of guidelines. You'll want to read with two different purposes in mind. First, you'll want to get a quick overview by looking at the title and the abstract, the figures and the figure caption. And once you know what's in the paper, then you'll want to study the details. You're going to skim the paper and probably even read the paper in a very nonlinear fashion. Don't expect to read the paper from beginning to end, line by line, word by word, but rather try to find the information that you're most interested in and ignore the information that doesn't seem to be really relevant. When it comes to studying the details, you're going to need to take some time. So these research articles can be rather dense, even if they're only a few pages long. Be prepared to consult other sources. For vocabulary words, a good place to start is Wikipedia. Finally, expect to be challenged. You're not an expert in this field, and so it's likely that you won't even understand everything that's in the paper. Here's my own approach for reading a scientific paper. This may or may not work for you. But what you'll notice as you listen to me go through this is that I am constantly asking myself questions, and you should do the same. So I begin by reading the title. I ask myself, is the message that I'm looking for likely to be contained in this article based on the title? Do I find any unusual words in the title that I might need to go look up? Next, I'm going to go immediately to the figures. I'll skim the figures to see what's there. I'm going to look at the figure captions if necessary in order to understand what's given in the graphics. Usually, from these figures and a brief look at them, I'm able to answer the question whether or not this paper has what I'm looking for. If it does, I'm off to the abstract, and I'll skim the abstract looking for the key phrases or words, possibly words that are repeated maybe more than once in the abstract. Next, I'm going to go and read the introduction, because the introduction will give a context to the body of work that I'm going to read. I'll read that very carefully, and then I'll move back to the figures. And this time, I am going to scrutinize the figure, each of those graphics that are important, with very high attention to detail. I'll ask myself, as I'm looking at those graphics, do I get it? Do I understand what the authors mean? And to check myself, I go and I read the text that accompanies the interesting figures so that I can see what the authors are describing in the figures and whether it matches my interpretation. Once again, I ask myself, do I get it? Finally, it's time to get down to business. I pull out my pencil because I write to think. And so I start interacting, usually with the figures, drawing structures to fill in the gaps and organize the ideas in my own mind. That's the approach that I typically take, and it usually has very little to do with reading the paper from start to, to end. But as you can see, I'm mostly interacting with the graphics, and I engage in that chemistry and try to understand the details and then check myself against what the authors describe in the text.